Makerere, in particular in terms of infrastructure development, we are happy to have gotten support to develop a biorepository. The integrated biorepository of HC Africa Uganda is the first biorepository to receive approval from the Uganda National Council for Science and Technology to operate international biopositor operations within the country. It receives biological specimen, it processes the biological specimen, it stores the biological specimen, and then retrieves that biological specimen according to demand, and where necessary, it will ship that biological specimen to the person that needs this biological specimen. So with such facilities, where we have varied amount of well-collected, quality-controlled, well-annotated samples, it's going to spur research. We have the capacity to do uh, tissue banking as well, and we have the capacity to do biological uh, banking. The governance structure heavily relies on an international biorepository advisory panel composed of four international experts. Miss Rita Laura from uh, University of Verona, Professor Sylvia Silva from George Washington University, uh, Mr. Harold Hugen, University of Washington, and uh, Dr. Faye Betsu from the University of Luxembourg. In addition to the biorepository in Uganda, we are very happy with the NIH and the NIH Common Fund for having provided us with the capacity to develop uh, further in our molecular setups. For example, we are going to get a sequencer. This sequencer will allow us to locally analyze the genetics of, uh, of our populations and try to answer local problems. We are really very grateful that these opportunities have been given to us and I encourage all my other local researchers in Uganda, other researchers in the region to come and we utilize these resources to the benefit of our population. The H3 Africa Initiative is a very broad initiative. We want to know how the genetics of Africans influence common diseases. For example, in Uganda, we do have a research initiative called the CAFJ, trying to understand the role of genetics in HIV progression or in TB HIV progression. The collaborators in CAFJ include here in Uganda, Baylor, Uganda, working very closely with Makerere University, Department of Microbiology, and the Medical School. And in Baylor, Botswana, working very closely with Botswana University. And across the Atlantic, with the Baylor College of Medicine, who will be doing the capacity building to train our physicians and our laboratory technologists and the scientists in how to identify these genes. We have a, a series of activities that we'll be undertaking both long-term as well as short-term training. In the long-term training, we'll be training PhD level students who will undergo a sandwiched training comprising of two years of didactic training at the Bella College of Medicine in Texas, Houston. And these will return to conduct their research at Makerere University. This opportunity has enabled me to appreciate what has been done in the European and Western settings in the field of genomics, where they have identified factors that are making people susceptible to such infections, such as HIV. CAFGEN is a key intervention that is addressing um, one, two of the most important disease burdens among pediatrics investigating the genetic associations that are associated with HIV and tuberculosis in children is key. CAFGEN brings in a new life into the diagnosis and identification of uh, children with HIV and tuberculosis. For the first time in Uganda, we will be studying genes of these long-term non-progressors. And I think this is very exciting to us who have been seeing children 
not progressive, and not understanding why, compared to their other children, they continue to be well. It's an exciting time for us in Uganda, for, you know, as a developing nation, and in particular with our collaborators, Makara University, uh, Botswana University, and Baylor College of Medicine.